Good morning YouTubers and weavers. So we're going to do another weaving video. There's not going to be actually weaving in this on the loom, but I want to show you a couple things. First off, while you weren't looking over the last couple weeks, I did a project that I didn't video. I'm just going to show you the end result of it. Um, set of four tea towels um, out of eight two cotton or if you're in Canada it's two eight cotton same stuff um, I'm using up leftovers of small amounts of thread that I had in various different colors this stuff it's been sitting around for ages and I just I'm gonna use it up so one warp four towels there's towel number one I guess I've forgotten which sequence I did these in, so we'll call this number one, although I don't think it really was. Second one. Third one, although now that I'm looking at it, this was actually the first one that I wove. And fourth one, and I think this was actually the second one that I wove. Anyways, you can see what I did. Um, here's holding it so the warp is going up and down this way. I've been showing you with the warp going sideways. Let's move these out of the way. The other thing I wanted to show you on this video is my, is the rattle that's on my loom. Um, you, you know I'm using a Louette spring loom and one of Louette's claims to fame for their looms is that they have a built-in rattle. People have asked me many times what I like and don't like about Louette looms and it's they're great to weave on but there's a couple things I'm not totally happy about. One of them is getting down on the floor to uh, tie up the treadles. The other one is I don't like their built-in rattle. To me, the dents in it are too close together. They're about five per inch. Um, I just don't like that. So I built my own rattle and I've had a couple people over the course of the last year or so leave comments on my videos about what did I do for building my own rattle because they've seen I don't use the Louette one. So I'm going to show you my rattle that I built. There it is. Now it's just a piece of board. So I went to the hardware store to Menards which is like a big box store kind of like Home Depot but it's local to the northeastern, the north central part of the United States and I bought a piece of one by eight and cut that down to about one by seven and a quarter seven and a quarter this way one inch this way then I put a piece of one by two that I screwed onto it where's the screws there's a screw there's a screw so that's just screwed on on the back, I don't know if it'll show up real well, but sort of, I used a router to take out the edge here to make this fiddle better. And then I used the router down here to dig a groove into it. And on this end, I used a router to take out that edge. By taking those out, it sits nicely on top of the castle of the loom. This routed bit here fits perfectly over the built-in Louette rattle. So let's just lay it up on the loom like that. Then let's get a little bit closer. I'm going to turn the camera off, move it a little bit closer and show you something else. Okay, so hopefully you can see. I've got the router now the router, the, the rattle now sitting, I'm holding it up off the top of the loom, but here's the built-in 
fluet rattle and I'm going to set this piece of wood on top. I also routed around all the edges so they're nicely rounded. Then I drilled holes in this piece of 1 by 2 drew a line right in the middle so I know where the very middle of this thing is and I've got an old pill bottle that I just used for storage for a whole bunch of cotter pins that I bought and I simply put these in these holes for whatever width I'm weaving now these holes are drilled one inch apart that's the width that I like to have bunches of warp thread going through the rattle. So you put the middle one in and let's say I'm doing a small 10 inch wide warp. Put that one in, don't count it, then I count one, two, three, four, five pieces on one side, cutter pins on one size, one, two, three, four, five on the other side. I've got my measurements for a 10 inch warp. Couldn't be easier. I like this because like I say I prefer the wider one inch openings in the rattle. I can set it for any width that I want. I've got, got enough cotter pins to do the whole width of my loom, but there's not rattle where I don't need it. And once I've got the warp wound on to the back beam, I can take the entire rattle off and take it off the loop, put it away. I'm all done. To me it's a simpler system. I've often had problems with these built-in rattles. Must be the way that I set up my uh, warp when I'm measuring it out on the warping board and everything. But I get tangles in these things. They're just so small. Um, I just don't like that. When I'm using the bigger openings I find I have far fewer tangles in my warp. So, anyways, I hope that answers the question that people have asked about my rattle. If you look, let's move the camera just a little bit. Come here, thing. You notice here's the little pin puller for holding the um, Texolve cords that are used to raise and lower the shafts. When I did this I even had to, I found that that was in the way. So I routed just a little piece opening right there. That, when this whole thing is, up, is turned right side up, sits right over this. Again, it fits perfectly. This routing on this thing is just enough that this, the, the full level center piece here fits right in between the boards on my castle. And I routed the ends to make room for these uh, pulley things. It fits perfectly. And I'm real happy that I did this. So that's me rattling on enough about a rattle. This is just a short video. I'm planning another project, but we'll get to that in a future video. So there we are, folks. Very short video, just showing you those uh, cotton towels that I did as a use up and what I did to make my own rattle. Like I said, I'm planning another project, but we're going to save that for a future video. I know this was short, but sometimes short videos are good too. 
Anyways, if you like my videos, I'd appreciate you subscribing, even though I don't uh, monetize mine, so I don't make anything off these. But anyways, that's totally beside the point. If you like my videos, subscribe. If you are already a subscriber, thanks much for doing that. Until the next time around on the camera and the loom, bye-bye.